We're probably all familiar with the Disney film Lion King, and although the movie's meaning tends to be more about leadership and taking responsibility, in this video we'll notice five concepts of ecology that we have learned in class. This video is a review for the test, so be sure to follow along and answer the questions below, and of course, spoiler alert. Number one, energy flow. The idea of energy flow is that organisms get energy to stay alive by eating other organisms. And the first step in energy flow are the primary producers, or autotrophs. They get their energy to make nutrients from the sun, which is possibly what Mufasa is telling Simba when he says, Everything the light touches is our kingdom. Wow. Although there are no plant characters, the movie is littered with different biomes and ecosystems that contain primary production. Autotrophs will have the most available energy, and when they are eaten by consumers, the energy decreases and can be represented by a food chain, or better, by a trophic pyramid. The animals in Lion King are aware of this ecology in their lives. Kid, what's eating you? Nothing. He's at the top of the food chain. <laughs> the food chain! <laughs> When Simba meets Timon and Pumbaa, he still thinks of himself as an apex predator at the top of the trophic pyramid. I'm so hungry I could eat a whole zebra. Ah, we're fresh out of zebra. Any antelope? Nah. -uh. Hippo? Nope. Until they show him that they live lower on the food chain, where they are secondary consumers who eat grub. Ew, what's that? A grub. What's it look like? Ew, gross. Mm. Tastes like chicken. Slimy yet satisfying. These are rare delicacies. Mm. Mm. Pecans with a very pleasant crunch. You'll learn to love them. And best of all, no worries. Well, kid? Oh, well. Hakuna Matata. Slimy yet satisfying. That's it. The other type of consumers in this movie are scavengers, which can be seen as the vultures circle around an unconscious Simba, or the hyenas, and the ecology isn't lost on them either. Will you knock it off? <laughs> well, he started it. Look at you guys. No wonder we're dangling at the bottom of the food chain. Number two, nutrient cycles. Mufasa lets Simba know that there's more to the energy flow than just the food chain. There's more? <laughs> Simba. Everything you see exists together in a delicate balance. As king, you need to understand that balance and respect all the creatures, from the crawling ant to the leaping antelope. But Dad, don't we eat the antelope? Yes, Simba, but let me explain. When we die, our bodies become the grass and the antelope eat the grass. And so, we are all connected in the great circle of life. Living things are made of organic molecules, usually containing the elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Other organisms called decomposers break down the organic molecules in animals' bodies and recycle it by releasing it into the soil and air and making it available for autotrophs to use in production of nutrients, thus continuing the circle of life. Number three, competition. Well, I was first in line until the little hairball was born. Competition is an example of animal interactions that we learnt. The seemingly most obvious example of competition is between Scar and the hyenas versus the lions. However, their competition has other effects on the rest of the ecosystem. Is that a challenge? Temper, temper. Carnivores. Ugh. When the lionesses refuse to hunt, the herbivore population eats all the grass and moves on, leaving the lions with no food. Where is your hunting party? They're not doing their job. Scar, there is no food. The herds have moved on. No, you're just not looking hard enough. It's over. There is nothing left. We have only one choice. We must leave Pride Rock. We're not going anywhere. Then you have sentenced us to death. Then so be it. Number four, symbiosis. Another example of interactions between animals is symbiosis, where animals live together, but it doesn't always mean good things. At first, Scar says he wants to create a mutualistic relationship, 
where both populations benefit. The dawning of a new era in which lion and hyena come together. However, the resentment the lionesses have against Scar and the hyenas leads to a parasitic relationship. Scar, there's no food, no water. Yeah, it's dinner time, and we ain't got no stinking entrees. It's the lioness's job to do the hunting. Yeah, but they won't go hunt. Oh, eat Zazu. Oh, you wouldn't want me. A better example of a parasitic relationship is a tick living on an animal where the tick benefits but causes harm to its host. Some animals let birds eat the ticks off of them, which is a mutualistic relationship where they both benefit. And finally, we have a commensalistic relationship, like these birds riding on the tusks of an elephant where one benefits and it doesn't help or harm the other. And number five, succession. When Simba and his friends return to the Pride Lands, their reaction is not very optimistic. Uh, we're gonna fight your uncle for this? Ecological succession is when old species die off and new ones take their place, which often happens after a disaster. When Simba confronts Scar, we see a lightning strike and ignite the Pride Lands. This definitely adds to the dramatic effect and makes it seem like the Pride Lands is at its end. But afterwards, we witness succession. Primary succession happens when nothing from the original environment is left, like after a volcano. Here, we can still see some trees, and when they, as well as the new plants, grow back, it is secondary succession. A sign that succession is complete is a stable environment where many animals and plants are present in the ecosystem, as we can see when the animals return to Pride Rock, like at the beginning of the film. Whoa, whoa, time out! Let me get this straight. You know her. She knows you, but she wants to eat him. And everybody's okay with this? Did I miss something? 